Just to clarify, in no way, as I said before, do we recommend doing this. This is our latest hybrid mod for the GTX 1060. It doesn't make a whole lot of economic sense. The PCB isn't in perfect shape. Uh, we had to do some filing of the socket to fit the liquid cooler to it. And then we had to buy copper shims to get the silicon to contact the cold plate. Before getting to the results of the 1060 hybrid, which we now have thermal and other results, this video is brought to you by MSI and their GTX 1060 Gaming X with Twin Frozer 6 cooling that we reviewed recently. So just like the RX 480, this was more of a mod out of curiosity than anything to see what we could learn about the card in the process of tearing it down and testing it and see what we can learn about if liquid is actually worth doing at this price point. The answer is not really because the AIB partners are really good at what they do, but, well, generally, sometimes they're not. <laughs> but for cooling, they're generally pretty good at what they do. With this, we did exceed the performance of AIB partner models like the MSI card, but you're still adding like 100 bucks to do this plus a lot of time. So unless you really want a, a weekend project, I wouldn't recommend it. That said, the results are pretty interesting. So here's what we have for the thermals. First of all, even with this crazy setup of uh, silicon paste, shim paste, cold plate, we're still getting a pretty good thermal output. So we managed to drive thermals down to 17.75 Celsius a load on the 1060, and that's a reduction of 25.9 Celsius from the reference card. Idle is down to 3.3 Celsius from 6.2 Celsius versus an aftermarket solution like the MSI 1060 Gaming X, just because that's the one we have. We're seeing a reduction still of 19.6 Celsius, so almost 20 Celsius cooler than an AIB partner model though of course it's liquid so you'd expect that our maximum temperature is now in the low 40s non-delta as opposed to the 71 celsius throttle point ish of the fe cooler originally as we showed in our review and most notably this thermal improvement did not for once stabilize our clock rate without requiring a power target increase so previously with a 1080 hybrid and the rx 480 hybrid mods we saw that the clock rate actually flatlined which is what you want you want it to be pretty consistent with this, we're still seeing some spikiness, and the only way to really resolve that with the FE model of the 1060 seems to be increasing the power target. With the MSI card, we have a pretty flat clock rate for the most part. There's still a few sudden drops that we talked about in the review, uh, but we're not having to increase the power target in order to flatten that clock rate, and it seems that a lot of this is just the design of the board itself and their VBIOS that they have. The MSI card runs a lower voltage to sustain the same clocks, that the FE card runs with a higher voltage, and that certainly accounts for some of it as well. We were able to slightly increase the overclock of the 1060 with the hybrid mod, like previous hybrid projects, but it wasn't quite as much as we saw with the 1080 hybrid. Now we're mostly hitting voltage limitations, so we we're able to sustain a higher and flatter overclock with the same 250 MHz offset, rather than the variance of the air-cooled version, which was also 250 MHz offset, but it was fluctuating between 2088 and 2151.5 megahertz, whereas the liquid cooled version that we built sits constant for the most part at 2151.5 megahertz. And increasing that power target does actually flatten the curve of the chart. So that goes to our theory that the power uh, is one of the main limits here of the FE card for the 1060. FPS impact is marginal. We'll see an extra frame here and there, but that's it. As we've said in the past, this really isn't a mod that you're doing for extra frame rates, that'd be kind of insane because it's an extra $100 for almost nothing. But the mod is mostly for fun and to see how things react to liquid, and we do get a pretty good thermal reduction, so that's potentially worth it for some users on the higher end cards. Again, wouldn't really recommend it for this necessarily at the price. The GN Hybrid does routinely show merits of liquid, though, from the 1080, 1060, and RX 480 that we've done. One extra note here, we're able to run fan RPMs at lower speeds to reduce noise levels, but still maintain significantly better thermal performance than the stock and AIB partner coolers. The radiator fan is at 30% RPM in one of these tests that you're looking at versus the 100% or auto RPM. And the GN hybrid version of the 1060 rests at 25.09 Celsius with that 30% fan speed, which is only a 7.3 Celsius gain from the 100% fan speed, and it allows for further quelled noise. And by the way, we're still nearly 20 Celsius lower than the FE card with the stock cooler, or about 15 Celsius lower than the MSI card. Okay, so that's it. That was the 1060 hybrid project. I'm going to take this one apart. It does look kind of cool, but it's definitely not healthy for the PCB. There's not a lot of point 
and keeping this one assembled this way is just annoying to store. So this will be taken apart. We're leaving the 1080 hybrid as it was. RX 480 has been taken apart and reverted back to stock for further testing. Uh, so all that's left standing currently is the 1080 hybrid, but I'm sure we'll be applying these coolers to more cards in the near future. So as always, subscribe to that or for that. And Patreon link in the post video if you want to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.